All right, yesterday we learned that everything in the world has a beginning, middle, and an end. And that's how God created the world. And that's, in a way, the whole idea of the world. Before the world was created, there was no beginning, there was no middle, there was no end. There was just pure <coughs> God, whatever that means, right? There was no existence. <clears throat> God created all existence. As soon as God started creating existence, then there was a beginning, a middle, and an end. That was the beginning. That's how the Torah starts. And says the Rebbe, the same thing is in our, <clears throat> our Torah portion, Kitisa. It contains in it the whole entire creation, beginning, middle, and end. And the beginning is the Torah. That's the Aleph of the Torah, Anochi. The middle is the world, Beit, Breshit. The whole entire world, from the beginning until the end, the end is the Geula. That's Gimel. And that's how the Torah also ends <clears throat> when it says that Moses did all sorts of miracles to the eyes of all the Jewish people. Aini Kol Yisrael is talking about also Mashiach was going to reveal godliness before all mankind. <clears throat> that's, the, that's the redemption. And it also talks about the miracle that Moses did, Aini Kol Yisrael, the eyes of everybody was the breaking of the tablets. And then the Rebbe comes out with this <clears throat> bombshell statement that everything that happens, everything that happens, it happens because God wants it to happen. And we can even say that the golden calf, which is exactly the opposite of God's will, and the Jewish people should not have done it, they got terribly punished because of it, and we're still being punished because of it, <clears throat> that somehow or other this was God's will because God wanted the Jewish people to come to a higher level, namely to defy their propensity to make mistakes. Jewish people love to make mistakes. It's like a big hobby by the Jewish people, more than a hobby. It's like their, you know, in a way, their, uh, what do you want to call it? Their national anthem. Let's make mistakes. So the Jewish people, it's a whole history of one stupid mistake after the others. Right, worshiping this and worshiping that, and being wanted to be with the non Jews, which continues until this very day. <clears throat> but they are mistakes. The sins are mistakes, but they're not, they're pleasant mistakes. People like to do them. We Jews, we like to make mistakes. And so to get out of this thing of doing what we like, that's why the golden calf came in the punishment. To see, see what happens when you do what you want. See what happens when you do it again? Yeah, yeah. Will you do it again? I won't do it again. Promise, promise. I won't do it again. Okay? Is he looking? Is he looking? Is he not looking? Let's do it again. Was it? Right? So that's the same mistake. You, you think God's not looking? Come on. What are you talking about? <clears throat> okay, but even if you do afterwards, you do the sin, you can still always repent. That's the essence of Judaism. And in fact, we, the Rebbe brings in the Tanya that three times a day, we pray in the Shimon Esrei prayer for God to forgive us. Why do you have to pray three times when God doesn't listen the first time? Second, no, God always listens to your prayers. So why do we have to pray three times? It's because, because after you, God forgives you the first time, between the morning prayer and the afternoon, for sure you're going to do something wrong. For sure. And when you ask God for forgiveness, for sure he's going to forgive you. So why do we have to ask him the night time? Because for sure you're going to do something wrong again. And God will always forgive you. <clears throat> so that's this process in the middle. That's the creation of the world. That's the olive base and gimel. And this is going all the time. But we have to remember that there's the gimel. It's all leading to a goal. It's all leading to a goal. <clears throat> this, I think, is a very, very important thing. <clears throat> I was thinking about this a lot today. <clears throat> I've read a lot of books of Viktor Frankl, Professor Viktor Frankl. He's the, the, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, uh, really recommended him very highly. And he said he's the only one. He said all the other psychiatrists and psych psychiatrists and fields and theories of psychiatry, they looked into a person and they found dirt and filth. And Viktor Frankl looked in the human personality and found diamonds. That's what the Rebbe said. Mine diamonds. Okay, so what is this diamond exactly? I think this is very important to us and very important to what the Rebbe is trying to say. <clears throat> <clears throat> Olive-based gimel. 
Aleph means there's a beginning, there's a middle, but there's a goal. <clears throat> we have today, in Israel especially, we see in the world, in the world, a big battle between, you know, evil and good. And it comes out that the good here is Zionism, which Zionism is not good. Don't think for a second it's good. But what really is the problem with Zionism? What's the problem? They don't have a goal. And Viktor Frankl, Professor Viktor Frankl says, a person that doesn't have a goal, that doesn't have something to live for, that all of his reason he wants to live is just that he shouldn't have problems, is that's a sick person. That person is a sick person and he's, and he's going to get worse. And that's Zionism. Zionism has no goal. The goal is just there shouldn't be problems. That's not a goal. That's also the goal of Freud and Adler and, and, and Jung and, and uh, what is it, Rogers and all these people. Right? All these psych psychiatrists, psychologists, whatever, the, all these things they have. There just shouldn't be problems. Should, no, there shouldn't be problems. should be what they call it, homostasis. No problems. That's, that's the big fault of Zionism. They're denying Mashiach. They're denying that there's a goal to Judaism. They're denying that there's a goal to the world. <clears throat> that there's a purpose for the Jewish people. The Jewish people were chosen for something. And the Rebbe is trying to point out to us that it's it's a mistake. Okay, don't call it a sin and it's not evil, whatever. That's It's just a mistake. It's a mistake to look at life like that. That's not, the Jewish people are special and we're here to show the world as a new goal. I just thought of this today in the morning, that there's a goal for all of mankind. And the goal of mankind is that to improve every instant. That's what Mashiach is going to do. Improve every instant of this physical world life. Not to bring us to heaven or to get rid of our sins, that we shouldn't have any problems. No, we should have problems. And our problems are that God is not revealed here. We have a goal, and that goal has to be in our mind all the time. And as long as that goal is not here, we should be pressured. We should be crushed. We should. Be. That's that's human. That's a human being. <clears throat> that's not religion. <clears throat> that's what's called health. <clears throat> that's what the Rebbe wants to point out. There's an olive base gimel. There's a beginning. There's a middle. But there's an end. There's a goal. That's the point. There's a goal. And the Rebbe wants to show us what the goal is. And the goal is, and it's true, we're going to have to go through the Aleph and the base, right? But especially the base, but the Aleph is there to help us, the beginning, the, the, the reason why God is creating the Creator is here. Okay, let's go. I hope he's, according to this, now it's understood how it is that these three things in our Torah, Torah, Torah portion, namely the breaking of the tablets, what's happening? <clears throat> namely, I'm sorry, our, the, namely the first tablets. The last tablets, and even the sin of the <clears throat> the uh, the golden calf and the breaking of the tablets, which is in the middle, they all are just one <clears throat> one uh, how do you say a, 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 a pattern, <clears throat> one theme. It's all in this kitisa, elevating the Jewish people. The is and even more. Inyan Echad, they are really one topic. Shetokno, that the purpose is Kitisa, elevating the Jewish people, raising up the Jews. Elisha Inyan Zeh, this is divided into three steps Aleph, Beis, and Gimel. You want the Jewish people to be elevated, and the job of the Jewish people is to elevate the whole world. It has to be three steps, it has to be done <clears throat> in an order. Gimel and Yanim, three things and three ways to express the elevation of the Jewish people. Number one, the first step is that's the first tablets. That brought about the Pashtu, simply the elevation of the Jewish people at the giving of the Torah. The Jewish people became Am Kadosh. Step number two, the sin and the breaking of the vessels. As God said, Yesha Kochachosha Shebarta, it's a good thing that you broke them. Shapol at the Indian Chuva that this brought about the idea of chuva, of <clears throat> repentance. Peace chon pelabali chuva. This opened the opportunity to repent, to strengthen yourself and overcome. The third one is Hechil Mea Chuva the Bene Israel Az. 
the repentance of the Jewish people that they repented back then. They saw the golden calf and they said, we're sorry. And that's why they got the second tablets. And then Kologam, this is also the <clears throat> highest thing of the revelation of the glory of Hashem. And Moshe, then God gave Moses the 13 attributes of mercy. That's in this week's Torah, Torah portion. <clears throat> How to request God's mercy. And this brought afterwards to the third step, a higher even level of the second tablets, which also brought about even more the shining of the skin of the face of Moshe. Like we're gonna we're gonna talk about that later. And until the Shlemos the, the, will be the complete redemption and the Gilu Amitish for Shlema and the true redemption in the future. I hope he's uh, according to this, so we can say also the reason for this that the tablets, the whole story about the tablets, how great they were, how wonderful they were, is mentioned here in Parshas Kitisa <clears throat> after the commandment of the building of the Mishkan last week's two two Torah portions of last week and the week before, building the, the tabernacle and, and the and the <clears throat> its vessels and the, the garments. I thought people know that the breaking of the tablets was for was before that, like we said before. <clears throat> Remember, that's the question the Rebbe asked in the beginning. Why is all the order of everything all scrambled around in the order of the Torah portions? Here it's talking about the sin of the breaking of the tablets and really the breaking of the tablet. And last week we talked about the building of the tabernacle and really the order was exactly the opposite. The tablets were broken before Moses told them to build it. And it says, because the building of the tabernacle, make me a mishkan, it, this was the intention of the whole entire reason why God created all of the worlds, especially this one. Namely, the Malot to fill the goal of Nitava Kodesh Baruch that God wanted, that there should be a dwelling for him in this physical world. <coughs> <coughs> and by means of this, Shemagalim, that we reveal in this world that the purpose is for the Torah and the Jewish people as it was complete in the third temple, will be complete in the third temple. Mikta Shashem So again, we, we have to look at this, what's going on here. This is not like, you know, God really <clears throat> is in the upper world. And he created this world. And no, he created the world. So let's do a trick over here. Let's do a trick. Something like, you know, they have the, the, uh, the what is it called? The Special Olympics. You know, the, the guys haven't got any legs. They haven't got it. But they can also, you know, do, look at all the, the efforts that they're making. And that they're, it's very interesting, very amazing. In some ways, that's even better than the regular Olympics they can do. But still, it's still second class. You know, it's not really the ultimate thing. Here, the Rebbe is not saying that. The Rebbe is saying that this physical world potentially is holier and more godly than God himself. Just God being alone without creating the world is not as high as God can be revealed in this physical world. This physical world is infinitely better than God himself. And it was the fact that God created the world and is revealed in this world, this makes an improvement in God. This makes no sense whatsoever, but that's the fact. The, whole fa the reason God didn't create the world also doesn't make any sense. Unless you want to say that God made the world as a testing ground so that we should go to heaven. That make, really makes God very, very cruel. And very sort of, how do you say, lazy. Lazy. Just created this whole world and he just sits back and he watches it. You know, like we would sit back and watch the television, drink a few beers, you know, watch the television. You watch all these people running around like rats for the last two, for 5,000 or 5 trillion or whatever years, running around and seeing what they do. Right? And then if they do good, they go to heaven. You can look at the world like that. All the religions look at the world like that. But Judaism says, no, 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 no. Every instant of this world is infinite. Every good thing you do in this world is infinite. It gives God pleasure, so to speak. It gives God something that he didn't have if he didn't create the world. Didn't create the world. And so what we're doing now, every moment in this world, we're not appreciating it properly. <clears throat> That's what Mashiach is going to do, that we'll appreciate this physical world better. Yishunkat, therefore, after the Torah finishes and talks about the commandment, of building the Mishkan in last week's Torah portion, two portions, Truman Tetzaveh, 
<clears throat> then it talks about, <clears throat> and also a little bit in the beginning of this week's Torah portion of counting every bringing a half a shekel, before Moses gives it to the Jewish people, the Torah tells us about these three levels, these three stages that there are in filling the kavana. What is it? Number one, it tells about how great the first tablets were. All of a sudden, from nowhere, it's talking about, read the Torah portion, you'll see. <clears throat> it <clears throat> all of a sudden, it starts talking about how the first tablets, they were so wonderful. They were given by God, and the writing was God. Then after that, it talks about that Moses went up on Mount Sinai, and the Jewish people sinned with the calf, and he broke them, broke these wonderful tablets. And then it talks about the third level. <clears throat> that's the number three. That's the last tablets. So the Torah is trying to tell us that there's a system that's in this world, and it's going to lead to the future redemption where we're going to reveal the number one, the beginning. Why it was in the beginning? The Aleph, Base, and Gimel, that it, they only understand the whole thing by means of these three steps. <clears throat> in other words, the Rebbe is trying to say that every instant that we're in this terrible, disgusting, frustrating exile that we're in, and we don't see God, it's a necessary step to number three. And we'll see how. Uh, no, we can't comprehend it. And Bechlal is Yoter, in a general way, we can see even more. That also, in general, this week's Torah portion, Kitisa, it begins, from the beginning to the end, Rumezid is also hinting at these three things. Not just the, the, this little story that's told <clears throat> in the beginning of the Torah po our portion about how great the first tablets were and how Moses broke them and how the third tablets. That's one little episode. But really the whole entire Torah portion, also from the beginning until the end, also hints at these three stages. Let's see how. Number one. Ki tisa at Rosh B'nai Israel, when you lift up the head of the Jewish people, that's the beginning, that's the first words of the Torah portion. This refers to the Rosh, the head, when you elevate the head. That's the Aleph, that's the beginning of everything. <clears throat> the head. <clears throat> Shame that they are the Jewish people and the Torah, that's the beginning. Shebishvilam, that for the sake of them, the world was created. In other words, the world was created for the Jews and the to use the Torah to reveal the holiness of the world. But that's why the world was created. That's the Rosh, that's the head. <clears throat> Bishfil Torah, that the Torah is also called a head, Rashid, it's called the beginning. And the Jewish people, they're also called the head, they're also called Allah Kamu how much more so Rosh B'nai Israel, how much more so the head of the Jewish people, Moses. <clears throat> Kafisha rose just like the head is found in a way of kitisa being elevated of a pratios and individually <clears throat> there are two things, two more things. Shekane and Barosh of Aleph in the head and in the letter Aleph, there are included also the bait and the gimel. Ha'emza basof. If there's a beginning, it implies that it's the beginning of something, <clears throat> namely the bait. The second stage is coming down. Over al pakudin. That's what it says. Call over al pakudin. Read in the first sentence, and afterwards lechaper al nafshot techem. The first sentence. What does it say? Take a half of a shekel for all those people who transgressed the Torah. That's step number two. Kiti said rosh. That's step number one. The head. Step number two. Those who transgressed. That's step number two. And step number three. Lechaper al nafshot techem. To bring forgiveness for all of your <clears throat> souls. That's step number two. Okay, so that's the beginning. That's the first sentence, the beginning of this week's Torah portion. What, what's the middle? The middle is Hemshech HaParsha, the continuation of the Torah portion. It's talking about the Egel, the breaking of the tablets and etc. That's the bait. We talked about that before. That's step number two. Step number three, the end of the Torah portion. This talks about the second tablets. And the final end, how Moses came down from the mountain with the second tablets, and his skin of his face was shining. But Yeru Mikesha the love, and everyone was afraid to come close to Moses. Shazel, this is Alderich, this is like in the end of the five books of Moses, it says the Kala Otot, all the miracles that Moses did in front of the eyes of all the Jewish people. And it says, what does it mean? The miracles we said, it means that you broke the tablets. 
<clears throat> and breaking the tablets, this is the brought about the second tablets, which was the shining face of Moses, which indicates the revelation of God that's going to be in this world, the whole world. In the end, that's the third step, number three. So we have the beginning of the Torah portion is what's the head. The middle is the, the sin of the golden calf. And the end of it is how Moses' face shined, how the world is going to shine in the future. Al Derek says similarly, it's also hinted at these three things in the three holidays, but that's near the end of this week's Torah portion. It talks about the holidays. What are the three Jewish holidays? Pesach, <clears throat> Shavuot, when the Torah was given, and Sukkot, the holiday the festival of joy. Pesach, this is the first of the holidays, Passover. This is attached to the Chodesh Aviv, the month of the spring. Aviv is the first letters Aleph, base. First letters Aleph, and afterwards we have a bait, Aviv. This is a revelation from Aleph, from God, from above to below. That's Passover. Everything happened from above to below. God did the ten plagues. God split the sea. God provided manna from heaven. God gave us the Torah. Everything God did, that's from above to below. The spring. Giloi milamai lamata. Shatavua, that's also the time when the produce, the midbarecha bebishulo, in the spring, the sun is shining, rain, the rain is being used. Everything that God gives, it, that's the month of receiving. Not everything, every, God gives the whole business. Beautiful month. Then the holiday of, that's Passover. God took us out. God loves us. God protected us. <clears throat> After the holiday of Passover, it talks about in our week's Torah portion, the next holiday, 50 days later, the holiday of Shavuot, seven weeks later. Hasheni, the second of the holiday, this is connected to Bikurei Katsir Chitim. This is the harvest. Avod is Adam. That's where we start working. We have to harvest from below to above. Like it says, Vachaga Asif Tkufazashana. This is in the time when you gather all of your grains and bring it into your house. This is the Shehu the Chazera Tashana. And the third of the holidays is Kashur La Asifa Vashlema, the call of it. And this is the, the third of the holiday. This is the holiday of true harvest. This is harvesting everything. It's called Ben Israel that all the Jewish people also, they all gathered together. That's the half Torah. God will, said, I will gather, gather you together. All the sparks of the world together will all be gathered together. So that's the three holidays. Passover is the beginning. God started. Shavuot, that's when we start to work from below to above. That's like doing the tshuva. We had it from the, the golden calf. And finally, the end, Sukkot, when God will cover over all of us, embrace us all, and gather us all together. That's the holiday of gathering. I'll be an owl, according to what we said before. See how we're going to get to this. Yeah, we can, uh, one second. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I'll be an owl, according to what we said before. Well, now we can also understand what it is, this shining of the face of Moses. She need voceful, which was added by the second tablets. Shazel and Derek, this is something like the gimel. We said before, that's like the, the goal. Shabbat Davka, this comes by means of the preceding the service of the bait, which was the sin of the golden calf and breaking the tablets and repentance. Davka Luchot Achronot, specifically the second tablets, that they came by means of the descent of the Jewish people very, very low <clears throat> to be in this world and to return everything back to the Creator. That's done by the second tablets. 
specifically by the first two stages of the Jewish people making mistakes and being in the world and getting overcome by the world and then mustering up the co the power and the identity and to defy the world and even transform the world, this brings the revelation of Talumos Chachma Kiflayim Latoshia. This brings the result of like the last tablets, the second tablets, which says in the second tablets was also the Midrash and the Talmud, the deep wisdom, which is double for salvation in the Torah. Reveal the double new power of the Torah. Not just to do good, but to transform bad to good. That's the deepest essence of wisdom. Above the revealed wisdom of the first tablets. The first tablets were God, pure God. <clears throat> and therefore, there was bad by means of Moses, it was added that he received the last tablets. Quran or Panam. That's why the second tablets, which had the ability to overcome and transform bad. And that was brought by Moses inspiring the Jewish people to repent. That's why his face shined. Something brand new. Shezeu or Atzmi, this is an essential light which is above any sort of being in the world. The Yidich, on the other hand, and the opposite. Heyoz, because the Demailad and Luchas Achron, because the second tablets in some ways were even better than the first tablets, because they came by means of a descent and being enclosed in the world in the sin of the golden calf to fix it up. And God said, now you carve out the tablets, taking regular stones from the physical world, not these present precious miraculous stones that God gave to Moses <clears throat> when he, on the first tablets, but regular stones from the world, like the first tablets, that they are that the tablets were done totally by God. Until even the things which are not good, Moses had the ability to transform even things that were not good. Therefore, Quran or Panav, therefore his face shined. The Yerami Geshet and people were afraid to come close to him. Lochen, therefore, Yitain al Panav Masveder, he had to put a, a mask over his face in order to conceal the revealed godliness of the Torah. When in the second tablets, being in a Birunim to refine things. <clears throat> Let's say this in another way. When God created the world, so he created man, and he gave man this thing that nothing else had, namely free will. And man could do whatever he wanted to the free will. And that's what God wanted. That he should have the, the desire to do bad things, and he should change and not do them. Not to, that's why God gave free will. But there's a big risk over here. What if God gives free will and people misuse the free will? And people can say, listen, God gave it to me. If God gave me the free will and I have the God-given ability to defy God and to do sins, so that's what God wants me to do, right? So what are you going to say to that? Yeah, but in the Torah it says you shouldn't. Yeah, but God himself said to me that I can. And the Torah is saying that I shouldn't. Who am I going to listen to? I have God's voice speaking inside of me, saying, do whatever you want to, worship, idol, steal, lie, whatever you want to. That's inside of me. That's God speaking inside of me. God gave me this free will. Huh? In the Bible, in this book, it says I shouldn't do it. But you know what? I can take care of that also. I can explain it in the Bible. Watch, watch. I'll, I'll make a new religion. I, I, can, I can figure anything out. <clears throat> so when the Jewish people did tshuva, this is the ability to refine all and to transform <clears throat> the free will, even if you make the wrong choice. To turn the whole thing back to use free will for what it was supposed to be used for, that you serve the creator from your own free will, that you turn from bad from your own free will, that you transform this ability to choose to choose freely Hashem. This is better than the first tablets. The first tablets, you didn't they didn't choose. They didn't use their free will. And the whole name of the game of why God created the world is free will. 
So tshuva, returning to God in a way, that, not in a way, that is the way that shows what free will was really created for and how it's better that free will was created, even though it opens up the possibility of doing bad. And you can transform that also. Oh, well, but Hester, but Master, that's why it says when Moses revealed this new ability to transform bad to good, so the revelation was so great that he his face shined. The people couldn't take it. Oh, well, Hester, Master, Master, that this concealment would, didn't, wasn't related to the Jewish people on their own. Because when God spoke to Moses, he spoke to Moses face to face. And when Moses spoke to the Jewish people, he spoke to them also. Face to face. It was like God at Mount Sinai was speaking to the Jews. It says face to face. God spoke to the Jews. Not just when Moses was speaking to them. God himself without any concealment. Look, and therefore, Kasher, when Moses spoke to the Jewish people and he told them everything that God said, who his seer at the Masfeh, when did God, when did Moses conceal his face? When he wasn't giving over God's message, but when he was giving over God's message to the Jews, he removed the 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 veil over his face. But Reub and Israel and Jewish people saw the face of Moses that it was shining. Rak b'shasha Moshe. Only when Je Moses and the Jewish people they have a connection to the world, in order to do things in the world, then Moses put the the, the concealment back on. He put the mask on. Bechadei, in order that the world would be able to receive this revelation and it wouldn't be negated. But this. The, and the intention of the covering over a Moses face, it wasn't concealment. It was really in order to reveal, like putting on sunglasses. It's not to hide the sun. It's only that should you be able to, to open your eyes and look. That the world would be able to, to reveal it, to accept it. And by means of the service of the Jewish people, re uh, refining the world, this brought about, Shekam also, as a Jew, is found in the world with free will. And the urge and the temptation to do things that are bad against what God wants. <clears throat> Nevertheless, a Jew is able to receive the revelation of Quran or Panav, the shining light of Moshe, like it was complete, and it will be complete in the Gula Miti Tishlema, in the Gimel, the third stage, which is the, the end of this week's Torah portion, hinting at the third stage, the letter Gimel, Lo Yikanif Od Morech, it says that your teacher, namely God, will not conceal himself from you anymore. Your eyes will see your creator. You'll see the holiness of the Torah. You'll feel the holiness of the commandments. But B'nai Yisrael and the Jewish people, all they, as they are working in the physical world, until Aj al in this way, will be also in this world revealed godliness. The role called Basar Yachtov. Not only will your eyes see, but your flesh will see God. Evan Mikir, and not only that, even the stones will yell out. The revelation of the, the creator in the creation will be revealed. That's step number three. So if so, the Rebbe is pointing out to us that these three steps are necessary, and the step number three should be any instant now. It should be here any second. The whole world will cry out the oneness of God. As we'll talk about more God willing, Tomorrow, and now let's do the Yom Yom. Let's see if this turns off.